now we are taking up the topic periodic classification and before we do that i want you to know i want to recall certain facts which we did in a previous unit so that you should know that why we are studying this uh, classification and where does this concept of classification came what is the need of studying this classification right so just uh, let me uh, recall those things for you that it will be easy for you see we know that matter is made up of atoms right it is clear yeah and the atoms are the building blocks of the element that means atoms atoms unite to form element so we can say that elements form the basic unit of matter right so now the question comes what uh, like what kind of elements are there how many elements are there where we found those elements so taking up the thing step by step i'm telling you so first of all you should know the definition of the element element is made up of atoms and it is actually a building block of matter so around 1800 in year 1800 approximately 31 elements were found right and with the passage of time around 1865 this in uh, discovery went to 63 elements and nowadays at this time now at uh, nowadays approximately 132 elements are known and still the more discoveries are in pipeline so and no matter that these elements can be they are of two types they can be man made this number comprises of man made elements that is synthetic elements and also the naturally occurring occurring animal um, this thing elements but still we have approximately 102 this is the approximate idea i have that i'm sharing it with you that is 132 elements that are known till date and still many more uh, this thing elements are uh, prepared in the lab on uh, in a day or a two it is the, the discoveries are in pipeline so that means there are so many elements which are found in earth no matter it is synthetic or it is man made but still we have many elements that is being discovered daily on daily basis so if we wish to study about the elements so i think it will be very difficult to study the the uh, 132 elements individually because we cannot there are so many properties how they look how they behave how they react with hydrogen or oxygen or any kind of material as you know that there are so uh, many kind of chemical compounds so how they react towards them and how they look like what are their physical properties what are the chemical properties so if you wish to take them uh, study those 132 elements individually it will be a very difficult task so to make the study easier we need a classification we need a classification now the question comes what do you mean by classification classification means to make the study systematic just grouping similar elements together and separating it from dissimilar ones right i'll repeat classification means grouping similar elements together and separating the dissimilar elements from each other then how it will be useful now it must be striking in your mind how it will be useful because at the, then you, what you can do is we can just look for the property of the element and we'll get the idea of all those properties all those elements which will, which resemble that particular element so we we cannot have the, the you can say the actual idea but still we can have the appropriate idea accordingly so that that means the classification can be helpful to make the study systematic to help in correlating the properties of the elements with some fundamental property we can also know the relation between different elements that are do they resemble each other or they are different from each other so that means the classification is very important so just repeating a definition for you what do we mean by classification it means grouping elements the similar elements together and separating the dissimilar elements from each other so that we can have the better idea we can study the element in a proper manner all elements we can cover in that case and it will be an easy for us to recall the properties if we classify those elements because when we will think that it belongs to a certain certain family we have we must be having an idea for that family so we just have to remember yeah this is the it is a member of that family then all the properties will just you will recall that so that means the classification is very important and it will make the study more easier now coming to the point how classification was done so 
the first attempt was made by the first attempt for classifying the elements was made by the earlier chemist however it failed but still they made the first attempt and was what was the um, this thing the first attempt it was the early chemist we call them as early chemist so what they do they just classified the elements on the basis of properties the basic property that they take took into consideration was valency and the behavior that means they behave as metal or non metal so they classified the elements into according to their properties like valency and all into two groups as metals and non metals so the I, the, the question must be striking your mind that where will be the uh, metalloids go because they just classified the elements into metals and non metals like they said the elements which are hard which are sonorous which are lustrous which are good conductor of heat and electricity or blah 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 they uh, come under the category metal and the elements which are non lustrous non sonorous poor conductor of heat and electricity with 4 5 6 7 valence electrons or so many properties you know now they come under the category non metals but we do have the elements called as metalloids which have the properties same as metals and non metals so there were no place for the metalloids so this classification actually failed then the second uh, contribution in classifying the elements came from the german chemist called as dobernier so the second contribution in classifying the elements came for, from the scientist Dobernier who was a German chemist. He made a great effort however it does not he, uh, he, he did not succeed in uh, you can say the classifying the, all the elements but still he made a little contribution he was able to correlate certain properties he can he was able to uh, uh, you can say the uh, it proves certain resemblance between the elements. Now, how he did, just look at the board. So, three uh, things he kept in mind while classifying the elements. First, he classified the elements in order of increasing atomic weights. So, that means what property he kept in mind, the what pro fundamental property he kept in mind was the atomic weight. He arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic weight. This was the first criteria he kept in mind while he was classifying the elements. Second, he arranged the elements in group of three. Group of three and the name given was the element which belongs to the group of three as triads. The name given was triads. So, he arranged the second criteria was he arranged the elements in group of three. Three, three elements together, three elements were clubbed together in a triad. And third, the, uh, the, the elements which were arranged in the triad resemble each other in physical and chemical properties. Physical properties and there was a resemblance. Obviously, we need to have the elements in a triad which resemble in properties. So, they were resembling in physical and chemical properties. And fourth, what criteria he kept in mind was that while he was uh, arranging them, he saw that the middle element, the atomic mass of the middle element was arithmetic mean of the first and the atomic mass of the first and the third element. This will be clear when I will take an example. So, just look for the triads. For example, the first triad he made was lithium, sodium, potassium. It was the first triad. See, this this is how you will represent the triad that means the group of three elements. So, the, the, what was the, the this thing see the, all these criteria will be fulfilled by the triad. Now, how it is fulfilled just look at the board. So, he's uh, uh, first time taking this fourth one see the uh, atomic mass for the lithium is 9 and for the potassium is it, it is 39. So, the middle element atomic mass was the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the first and the third. So, that means 9 plus 39 by 2 comes out to be 23. So, this was the atomic mass of the sodium. So, this is the fourth. I think it is clear now. The atomic mass of the middle element was the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the first and the third element. So, this justifies this fourth criteria. Then uh, more criteria we will be seeing that whether they obey or not. They he made the elements arranged in a group of three that is triad. You can see these are three elements grouped together that is it is a triad. Next 
increasing atomic weight you can easily see the atomic weight is in increasing order 9 23 39 that means atomic weight is increasing lastly they should resemble in physical and chemical properties we know they resemble in the, their physical and chemical properties as three of them are metals with plus one valency and moreover they have many properties similar to the as they are grouped in the category of metals so obviously they are uh, they resemble each other in many properties so he may, he named this triad as alkali group triad as they are member of alkali group that means when they are dissolved in water they form strong alkalis so it was alkali group triad he he made fewer more few more triads as i am illustrating an example for you that is like iron cobalt nickel see you have to arrange like this similarly same increasing atomic mass similarity in properties group of three triad the atomic mass of the cobalt is the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the iron and the nickel similarly one more example chlorine bromine iodine it was called as halogen group triad because they are all halogens similarly the same properties it fulfill all these four criteria similarly we have few more example like it was calcium strontium barium it is called as alkaline group triad because they are alkaline in nature so like this he was able to make four five triads but actually this classification this this kind of classification failed because he was not able to make more triads fulfilling all these four criteria because the four criteria the triad should fulfill the all uh, all these four criteria that is increasing atomic weight they should be arranged in group of three triad they should resemble each other and the atomic mass of the middle should be arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the first and the third so some uh, he was able to make fewer triads like this but he was unable to make more triads because they were not fulfilling the all those properties they might have been fulfilling fulfilling the one or two properties but the other properties were lacking in it so actually the dobernier failed in classifying the elements but still uh, uh, he made a contribution that is a big effort because it is not always that you succeed in the things you do it is always a good attempt that you at least try right so dobernier made that try then the second classification the second attempt the who made the who made was a english chemist called as newland so let's see what he did what contribution he did so the second uh, you can say the classification was done by alexander newland now we should know what criteria he kept in classifying the elements as we know that uh, the uh, this thing the dobernier kept the four criteria so we should look that what criteria alexander newland kept in mind while classifying the elements he classified actually the elements on the musical note he may his classification was entirely different you can say because he classified the elements on the basis of musical note as you must have heard about the musical notes components that is sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa so similarly he made the contribution he made he made an attempt to classify the elements on the basis of that musical note so the criteria he used was first again increasing atomic weight so that means the fundamental property he also used was the same as used by the uh, this thing the dobernier that is the atomic weight and that is in the increasing order and secondly what he did while he was arranging the uh, elements in order of musical note like see i'm writing it for you how he arranged he arranged like this lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine noble gases were missing actually missing in it and um, so more lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine sodium magnesium aluminum silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon was again missing uh, we write uh, potassium and calcium he was able to classify the elements only till ca yes, calcium that is with atomic mass 40 mu so what he said so see Uh, uh, we'll see that uh, do they obey the criteria the Alexander Newland used. So 
the first criteria was the arrangement in order of increasing atomic weights. We can see if you write the masses, you will get to see that the atomic mass, atomic weights are incre is in increasing order. The secondly, <coughs> the second thing what he wrote, what he told is that that how we resemble the musical note. As we know, if we start from sa, sa is the first music musical note, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa. That means first sa comes at first note and the last sa comes at eighth note. So similarly he said that means sa and sa both are similar. So similarly he applied though that condition to this here. He said that every eighth element resemble its first element in properties. So like if I want to look for sodium that uh, to whom element the sodium resemble. So I will just count the eighth uh, from that. That is the sodium is the eighth element. Eight means eight. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That means it is similar to the lithium. So that as the sa is similar to the sa, the first note is similar to the eighth note. So similarly, we can uh, every eighth element repeat the properties of its first element. Like the silicon uh, repeat the properties of the carbon, aluminium repeat the properties of boron. Similarly, every eighth element shows the properties similar to this first element. So this is how he arranged the elements in that way. In, but at that moment only fewer elements were there. There were not so much elements but still he was, it was discarded because he was able to arrange those uh, elements only lighter elements that is up to atomic mass 40. He was unable to arrange the uh, elements with more atomic mass. So actually this classification failed but still it was an interesting one because no scientist has related the chemistry with the music and he was the one who related the chemistry with the musical note. So he made an effort but still it failed because